Hey subscribers and watchers, what's up? This is me, Vips from Slider here. In this video, I'm going to talk about enter process data exchange in Android. So the first thing we are going to talk about is what is the app sandbox. When you install an app, a unique ID is assigned to that app at the time of installation. It is pretty much like this, that there is a unique ID over there for your app. It has a process with the same name as the package name and what it has is a folder where it can put its files like shared preferences or normal files. Same applies to every app that you install. Depending on the user, depending on the app that's being installed, there's an app user ID and there's a process with the name as the package name at the time of making this video. Several app packages now may run as part of one process. That means multiple apps can be a part of the same process or what you can have is two different processes. However, the app is sharing data with each other despite belonging to different processes because they have the same app user ID. Now this is one of the things that you can do. Now this is done with the attribute Android shared user ID which we are going to take a look at in the example in the next video. Now both apps must be signed with the same certificate otherwise if the WhatsApp guy makes an app and you made your app and you access data from WhatsApp that's not fair and hence both must be signed with the same certificate. Now remember both apps can access each other's data that is files, shared preferences and resources. So now that we have talked about it, let's talk about enter process communication in Android. Now this will be coming up in the upcoming videos. There are four means of enter process communication. One is your intents which we have talked about slightly in our playlist Android tutorial for beginners. Then there is the messenger binder iBinder which I will be talking about in the upcoming videos in the same playlist. And then there's the content resolver which I'll be talking about in our database tutorials playlist when we talk about content provider. Now the next thing is let's talk about a simple example which we will be working out in the next video. So what you have is app 1. There's an edit text which says hi it's me Vibs. You click store over here that data is going to be put inside a file that belongs to that app 1. Now this runs inside process 1. Now what you have here is app 2. Here that data is like this was from app 1, hi it's me Vivs. In fact it's the same data from app 1. You click load over here, it's going to load the data from the file that belongs to app 1. Now this runs inside a separate process which is process 2. Now the way that this can happen is by having a common app user ID which is a sandbox that we have been talking about so far. Now remember the word sandbox collectively means the app user ID, the process and the file system combined together. So which classes or methods do we need for this kind of stuff? App2 wants to read data from App1. So you have your App1 over here and you have your App2 over here. The first thing that you need from App2 is the installation information of App1 which folder is it installed in, I mean where is the file contained and so on. So use the package manager class called get package manager from your context and this contains information related to the various application packages that are currently installed on your device. Now step two would be to call get application info from your package manager object that you got in the previous step. Here you specify two things the package name and the flags. So the package name would be the package name of application 1 because app 2 wants to access app 1 and you want the data about where app 1 is installed right then the flags would be something like this get metadata get shared library files or something in our case what we need is the metadata of app 1 hence it would be get metadata for us the next step would be to use the application info object which is actually uh, information corresponding to your application tag from the manifest file of, of app 1. So there's our app 1 and app 2. Now remember using the application info object that we got previously we simply call data dir variable that gives us the location where app 1's files are stored and once you have the location it's very simple use the file class get uh, link that location up use a file input stream open connection and so on right. So these are the three steps that we are talking about. Now again if these steps are not so much clear to you in this video, 
don't worry about it next video we are gonna work this example out and then you will understand exactly what is happening in the meantime if you guys do like what you saw please like this video share this video subscribe to our channel and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below thanks for watching we'll catch you guys in the next video have a nice day